may seem like the season just ended, but today, the NBA draft, uh, a lot of storylines coming in. Before I get to the draft really quick, I just want to talk about a couple big stories from today. The first is a massive, not massive, but a pretty big trade between the Portland Trailblazers and the Detroit Pistons. The Pistons are going to get a 2025 first round pick a 2022 so a pick for tomorrow a second round pick swap with portland and i believe an additional second uh second round pick in 2025 as well in exchange for jeremy grant who pistons fans up until this point were expecting like two high firsts or portland's seventh overall pick or something so i don't know if this was just an instance of portland of uh detroit driving up the, the asking price and kind of just floating that out there or if they weren't as interested or teams weren't as interested as they thought maybe um but this also creates a 21 million dollar trade exception for detroit which tells me that they did this either you know knowing they weren't going to get much better or in a panic needing to create some cap space to go make another move the popular rumor is that detroit's going to put themselves in prime position to try to land deandre ayton uh, whether they just offer him something outright or and kind of force Phoenix to either match it or not or try to get a sign-in trade worked out. Um, Jeremy Grant's probably the piece the Suns would have wanted, so I can't imagine it's going to be a sign-in trade. But either way, they are, they are clearing some cap space for something big, so I'm expecting them to make some waves tomorrow. Uh, well, today, technically, it's about 1.30, uh, so later today. Um... And for Portland, this is kind of a risk-free um, move. I mean, Jeremy Grant, when he got to Detroit, was playing out of his mind uh, as they kind of went towards the rebuild again and that youth movement. Um, he just kind of st stood out like a sore thumb in, among all the other young prospects and players. So it makes sense. He was very coveted in the uh, trade deadline in, uh, last year. So it makes sense that, you know, a team like Portland would be like, okay, we need help not only on the on the wings with defense, but we need some scoring help for uh, for Dame here. So I think this will be a good fit. I think um, maybe defensively he's not as, as active as he has been earlier in his career, but I think Jeremy Grant can still be a good two-way player. You consider, too, that Portland also has, you know, guys like Josh Hart who are really good perimeter defenders. And they can, you know, you can kind of see the nucleus of something good getting built there. But this isn't like, cool, they're done now, everything's good. <laughs> this is like the move before the move. So Portland has to probably take another big swing, either um, upgrading that center position with Nurkic. Uh, I do really like Nurkic, but he's hurt a lot and he's a little limited in his upside. So I don't know if this is, you know, going to be something where they try to make a splash for a center or if they look for another guard that they can pair up with Dame. I don't know who would be out there, um, but we'll see. I, I do really like this just because it feels like Portland didn't really have to give up much, like a, a first round pick in 2025 from Milwaukee. Probably not gonna be the highest pick given you know they're primed to be one of the top teams in the East for the next five, six years, uh, but we'll see. Uh, the other story was a trade that has not happened yet, but is apparently heavy in discussion. And that's the Spurs sending DeJounte Murray to the Hawks for John Collins, which I can only hope is not true. Um, I'm sure there's some rumor to it or like there's some merit to it being uh, such a talking point. But I really hope the Spurs don't do this because DeJounte Murray blossomed into an all-star this last year. He's on a very team-friendly contract. And that Spurs team, selfishly, is just fun to watch, which I can't believe I'm saying as a lifelong Spurs hater that team is just so much fun to watch they you know they moved out Derek White for a first round pick earlier this year they have Joshua Primo who's only like 19 years old he had flashes in his rookie season but he's obviously you know still got a little bit of developing to do he's not ready to inherit that team DeJounte is just such a perfect um like pilot for that offense basically he would fit in with Atlanta, don't get me wrong, I think if they do this, just give Travis Schlank executive of the year already, because John Collins has been one of the most reportedly disgruntled players I can think of over the last two years, and he's just still been there. 
So if they move someone who had no interest in being there for a backcourt mate for Trey Young who can not only cover the holes that he has on defense, but create and run the offense for him to allow him to focus either on just scoring and getting open shots or lightening the load and getting him those longer breaks off the court uh, where you don't have to run the risk of wearing him out over the course of an 82-game season. So we'll see. I'm expecting, you know, complete pandemonium tomorrow leading up to the draft. Uh, as for the draft itself, there's been a little bit of a, of a shakeup overnight now. Um, Paolo Bancaro out of Duke has become the, the odds-on betting favorite to go number one. Uh, he has not worked out with the Orlando Magic, according to everything I read. Um, he kept pushing it back because he just kind of, his team didn't think he was going to get picked by them. So either Orlando's putting out a ton of smoke screens to try to drive up some value and trade out of that top pick for, for a minor haul, or someone's trading up and just wants to make sure that they're going to get Paolo and the sports books know it and it just hasn't been made official yet. I think either way, this is going to be related to some type of trade. I don't think that the Magic are just going to suddenly switch everything up and, you know, and take Paolo. Um, that said, I don't think it would be a terrible idea. I think Paolo is the kind of high upside franchise cornerstone that, you know, any of these teams are going to be happy to get. Um, Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren, sure, Chet Holmgren, sorry. And Apollo, the three top clear-cut prospects in this draft. Um, I'd be shocked if it was any other order but Jabari, Chet, Apollo to Houston at three. Um, but we'll see. I think OKC drafting Chet kind of seems like a done deal. Who knows what would happen if a team traded up and took Apollo first. And then Jabari and Chet were both sitting there for OKC. But that's kind of the fun of the draft. And you probably have heard this phrase a ton over the last couple weeks, especially as it's gotten closer to draft time. But a lot of people have been saying the draft doesn't start until the fourth pick, the Sacramento Kings. It's a lot of pressure for a team that has had some troubles in the past. Um, currently, if they draft according to best available, most mocks have them taking Jaden Ivey, who is arguably the best guard prospect in this draft. Um, the only problem with that is the Kings have drafted guards the first three, or with their first picks in the last three drafts, and they just sent one of their guards um, after one year to Indiana in Tyrese Halliburton, who was arguably their best guard. So the thought of taking Ivy, even if he is the best available, even if any other team would get praised for doing it, it's going to probably be, you know, a point of contention for, you know, for critics and analysts saying the Kings aren't drafting for need. They're just taking the best players, but they don't have a plan to sort it out. So it's kind of a terrible spot for the Kings to be in. Um, there's apparently a lot of, of um, interest in that fourth pick in Jaden Ivey. A lot of teams trying to trade up to get him. Uh, the Kings have such an odd, like, like primary focus as a franchise though they just want to get to the playoffs I don't even think they care about winning I think they just want to get to the playoffs and break that streak they have the longest streak of in the NBA right now of of um, consecutive times missing the playoffs so they just want to break that streak and they'll go all in to do that I mean they made their trade for DeMontis Sabonis last year um, and Sabonis and Fox looked very good together Davion Mitchell um, absolutely lived up to the off-night moniker that he has earned over the years um, in college and then last year his rookie year. So I really don't know. I don't know what to expect from the Kings. Uh, the, the most likely scenario here is the Kings don't take Ivy, don't trade out, and take someone else completely random. Either um, top forward, uh, whoever's best available from there, I don't know, but I'm fully prepared for a head scratching, like, what were they thinking type of moment. Um, from there, I think it's going to be more all about um, kind of outside trades, changing up the draft orders and kind of moving things around. 
I think there's going to be a lot of trades, honestly. Um, there's been too much speculation um, basically confirming that. You hear, you know, the, wiz the Wizards are shopping people around. Bradley Beal is a popular topic with no one knowing what his plan is, whether he's uh, re-signing, opting in, or if he's going to, you know, try to force his way out. Kyrie Irving might be on the move to LA. What are what's gonna happen then with the Nets with KD? The Pacers are shopping Brogdon and they might be shopping Miles Turner. The Blazers want to get OG and Anobi. Like there's all sorts of potential moves that are sitting there that, you know, who knows? This this trade with the Spurs and the Hawks may go down. Like it could be anything. Anything can happen. And that's part of the excitement of the draft, but it also makes it a lot harder to try to project out what these teams are gonna be doing. So what I'm most focused on in these, in the, after Sacramento picks it for, it's Detroit, Indiana, Portland, New Orleans, San Antonio, and Washington. That's the rest of the top 10. I think almost immediately after Sacramento makes their move, there's going to be a huge run on those stretch uh, wing players. You're going to have, you're going to see teams really wanting to shore up that perimeter defense, that two-way ability. Um, and I think you're going to see guys like Shaden Sharp and um, EJ Liddell and Malachi Brannon. I think you're going to see those guys, uh, teams take swings on those guys. I think uh, Keegan Murray is another popular topic, um, another popular player. Benedict Matherin apparently is a, is a popular, um, popular player within the Kings organization. It just feels like there's going to be a lot of these guards getting taken and just kind of hoping for the best. I think if a trade can't manifest for someone like Charlotte, who really needs a center, I think you could see them opting or trying to opt for a player like Jalen Duran uh, if he falls to them, or maybe even trying to make a move up, whether it's with, you know, PJ Washington. Apparently, they've been trying to move Gordon Hayward. Um, so, the, really, it's going to, I think it's going to be a premium on those wings up until you get to a couple player, a couple teams that really have specific needs. Um, and then, who knows from there? I, I am admittedly not a huge college basketball person. I have like all my notes and stuff right here that I'm trying to go off of. But really, it's going to be you know anyone's guess. I think teams are going to be you know there's two different type, types of uh, of thought of of thought process to go by here. Like you're going to have those teams that think they're a piece away and are willing to part with those draft picks to secure a player like a Gordon Hayward. Um, and then you're going to have the other teams that are like, you know what, maybe we'll reach a little bit in the first round and take someone that was, you know, projected 40th pick or something, take him 28th if we hit even better because then we have that extra year of, of team um, of team option. So I really think it's going to be, you know, one of the more one of the more hectic and frantic drafts in recent memory. Um, I don't know really outside of the top like five who those like sleeper contenders are. Um, I'll have to do a little bit more on that and kind of, you know, see what comes out as the draft goes on. Maybe like a post-draft type video. But I'm really curious to see what's going to happen because I just want to see all the moves. I think that's going to be probably the big story coming out of this is going to be some team trading up to take a huge swing or another team stealing all the headlines with some blockbuster trade that no one saw coming. Um, I know it's really broad, but I don't want to just like spit random things out or random players out as if there's any type of like knowledge of what's going to happen. I just think it's going to be one of those drafts where, where anything can happen. And honestly, that's the most exciting part. Um, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well on the draft, on if there's any players that you're excited to see or that you're hoping that they fall to your team. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm not going to enjoy first round picks until like 2028 at this point. So it doesn't matter what I want. I would love to hear uh, what other people have in mind. Uh, so please let me know your thoughts on the draft. Uh, any of these other moves, anything you've been hearing in the comments, please. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the draft tonight and I will be back.